I work from home and get a legitimate deduction for home office expenses. Watch this video and find out if you can too. In this video, we'll cover the U.S. tax rules for deducting home office expenses. Both are two key requirements, exclusive business use and principal place of business, must be met unless an exception applies. Expenses fully or partly related to the home office are allocated or apportioned. Beginning 2013, the IRS allows an optional dollars per square foot method that may have advantages for many folks. There are additional requirements if you are an employee rather than self-employed. To get any deduction at all for home office expenses, your office must meet two key requirements, or one of the exceptions. The two key requirements are, first, the space must be regularly and exclusively used for business. This doesn't necessarily mean it must be a separate room, but separate helps. It can mean part of a room that is dedicated to business use all the time. Part of the dining table don't cut it. In my experience, the IRS has a hard time with only part of a room. So if you try for this, have pictures and other support. The second requirement is that the space must be either your principal place of business or a place where you regularly deal with customers. I saw a video saying you could get a deduction for home office when you have a retail shop. That is incorrect. The home office must be the place you earn most of your revenues. Some professionals have some rooms of their home that they use for business and meet with customers or clients. This can get them the deductions even if they have another place of business. But if you live in an apartment or a gated community, chances are that your community rules prevent you from meeting with customers at your home. The IRS has been known to ask for apartment leases or homeowner association rules to check up on this. There is an additional requirement for employees to get any deduction at all, your use of your home must be for the convenience of the employer. It generally helps to have a letter or email from the employer stating you should work from home. Just telecommuting when you want to is not for the convenience of the employer. The employer needs to have a policy that you must do so at a particular time. There are exceptions to the exclusive use and principal place of business rules. First, using space for storing inventory or product samples can count. If you use half a closet to store Amway products you sell, the space used for storage counts. This exception's mere existence, though, argues for the idea that a full room is normally required. The second exception is for people who have a separate building for their business. This building must not be attached to the house. So a dentist or an auto mechanic can have one of his or her two places of business in a detached office or garage on the same property. The third exception is for space used for licensed daycare. There are some additional requirements for space used for daycare but the exclusive use need not be on a 24-hour basis. I won't be covering the additional rules here. Finally, any portion of the home used as a hotel, bed and breakfast, or similar short-term lodging is not subject to the exclusive use and principal place of business tests. For these activities, like daycare, apportionment is based on time used 
as well as square feet. Once you clear the hurdles for getting any deduction at all, then it's time to consider what to deduct and how much. Here are some examples of expenses that can be deducted in part. You always get a deduction for business supplies, business insurance, and anything else directly related to the business. Such things are not really home office expenses. It's things like rent, depreciation, interest, property taxes, and maintenance that relate to the space that we're talking about here. Some home office items may not produce much tax benefit. If you itemize deductions and own a home, you're already getting a deduction for interest and property taxes. If you claim home office expenses, the amount of interest and taxes deducted for business reduces your itemized deductions. This still reduces your self-employment tax. If you own the home, the deduction for depreciation reduces your basis in the home. This may or may not have an impact on future tax if you sell the home. So now you know the total expenses. What do you do with them? You allocate any expenses directly related to the office and get a full deduction for these. Such expenses could include a separate electric bill for the business portion, separately paid for maintenance, or similar separate expenses. You must apportion the rest of the expenses based on the ratio of square feet used for business to total square feet of the home. If you use the space for daycare, you must also apportion based on amount of hours used. Here's a quick example. You incurred rent of $12,000, utilities of $1,500, and maintenance of $500 for a total of $14,000 of expenses. Your office was one 10 by 10 room and the house had a thousand square feet under air. Thus your business portion is 100 over 1,000 or 10 percent. Your deductible expenses were 10 percent of 14,000 or 1,400 dollars. The IRS provides Form 8829 to help you calculate the deduction for home office expenses. The form's not mandatory but can be helpful. It cannot be used if you use the simplified method, if you are an employee or partner, or if the expenses become part of inventory. Instead of figuring actual expenses and apportioning them, the IRS lets you use a simplified method. The deduction under this method is currently $5 per square foot used for business. The $5 is the full year amount. It's adjusted by the IRS periodically for inflation. This method can only be used for business space up to 300 square feet. If your business space is larger, the simplified method is limited to 300 times $5. If you use the space less than all year, you must calculate the average square feet used and the 300 limit applies each month. There are some advantages of using the simplified method. You don't reduce your itemized deductions and don't reduce the basis of your home. The simplified method is even simpler though. There's no form. You just enter the number and of course keep record of how you came up with it. There are limits on the deduction for home office expenses. If you're self-employed, the deduction is limited to the income from your business before the home office deduction. Any casualty loss is limited first. Then the remaining limit is applied to other expenses. 
to the extent your deduction for the other expenses exceeds your income before the deduction, the excess is carried forward and treated as expense next year. Let's review what we covered. If you are self-employed, you can get a deduction for expenses related to business use of your home. To get the deduction, the particular space must be used exclusively for business and must be either the principal place of business or be used regularly to deal with customers. If you're an employee, you can get the deduction only if the use is for the convenience of the employer. There are several exceptions to this exclusive use requirement. The amount of expense deducted is the total expenses times the ratio of the business square feet to total square feet. Instead of tracking and apportioning expenses, you can use a $5 per square foot simplified method. For more on this and other tax issues, buy my book, Income Tax in the USA, from Amazon.com. I hope you found this useful, and thanks for learning with me.